the praises of the King. Rise among us, let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. service this morning. Um, we have so much going on around here that I cannot even begin to list it all. Um, I do want to thank everyone for your prayers and your texts and your emails and your <coughs> calls and your thoughts and your, as, as uh, we've been at the house all week this week. I'm doing much better, so glad to be back among the living. Um, but I want you to take a look at your information sheets that are there on the tables. You'll have all kinds of good things. So I hope you'll spend some time looking over the offerings and the happenings and learning about St. Andrews. I think you'll find a warm, welcoming, busy, busy, busy church ready and looking to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. I do want to draw your attention to just a, a couple of things. Um, first, the hugs and kisses are being delivered next week. So hugs and kisses, make sure your orders are in today. Soup. Super Bowl Sunday is next week. In addition to the game, our United Women in Faith are preparing soups um, that you may purchase. Those orders have to be in today so they can prepare them. You'll pick them up after the worship services next Sunday uh, to take home and, and have your either lunch or dinner ready for your Super Bowl Sunday. On Valentine's Day, February the 14th, we are having our love lunch and I hope you'll read all about that. You know, we have so many among us who have experienced loss in their lives, um, whether that be a spouse or a child or a parent or a cousin or a puppy, whatever that is. Um, we want to get together and celebrate the gift of love. And um, so we'll have good conversation and we'll have some fun and fellowship. Well, it's a covered dish lunch, so bring your own food. We will provide drinks and tissues and as we tell our stories and share, um, share the love that we have for our loved ones who have gone on to the church triumphant. Um, so we'll also have um, some laughs and giggles and uh, even a little entertainment for you. So hope you'll make plans to be there. Um, Shrove Tuesday is coming up quickly. That's February 21st. Traditionally in the church, I just got this note, so I'm going to, off the top of my head, traditionally Shrove Tuesday, which is the, the day before Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday begins the season of Lent, which is a season that we prepare ourselves for the resurrection. And we travel with Jesus from all, all the way through his ministry in, 
toward Jerusalem, always walking toward Jerusalem, always walking toward the cross. Because we can't get to the resurrection if we don't travel through the cross. So it's an important um, time, but it's a time when we think of giving up of ourselves, whether that be, um, some people tend to give up food, I tend to give up dieting. Um, <laughs> Um, what, what it, um, but it, because it's a time where fasting is something that um, is, is a focus, people in the um, early church would use Shrove Tuesday as a day to get rid of all of their fatty things and sugars and things that um, needed to be out of the pantry so they could focus on Lent. It was a day of cleansing. We have... Um, used that time as a time to gather and celebrate our bounty, um, usually with a, a pancake supper. So we'll get together and we'll celebrate that and we'll probably a little bit talk about why we have a show Tuesday that night, but a, a time of fellowship, a time of pancakes. Um, so look in church chat this week in your emails for information about that and we'll talk about it again before the time comes. But for now, I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Will you share that peace of Christ with what, as you stand and turn to one another? Are you still taking shingles by the sun? Or? <laughs> You know what? I slept for four days. Wow. Like, when I, when I saw the doctor, I said, you know, this is a dragon. And the doctor said, you're going to feel like you have the flu for about three or four days. And sure enough, I went to bed and woke up four days later. Oh, my goodness. I had, I had like one meal a day that when Bill got home from work, he'd bring me, get something in bed and eat that, and then I'd go back to sleep. So, um, by Thursday, I got up and spent the whole day upright. Out of bed, but other than that, I barely. Holy cow! Yeah. Yeah. It, it kicked me right in the head. Mm. Hot, that. Yeah. But it's all good. I'm a very fast eater. Usually, yeah. I've through the last couple of days. Things like that. So this seems to be got the medication going really quickly. I seem to be in good shape. So good to hear. Are you gonna go get the shot? My insurance will pay for it till I'm 60. That's why I haven't had the shot. But yes. Oh. Sea and sky, I 
intentional pause in our morning and ask God to, to light our way through our scripture readings. We listen now, God, for your word. Let its message illumine our minds that we may will as Jesus willed. Let us, let us hear as you quicken our hearts that we may love as Jesus loved. And let the power of this scripture speed our steps that we may do as Jesus did. Amen. Well, in Matthew chapter 5, we continue in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount as he talks about salt and light. And then he goes on to discuss um, the law and the prophets. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house." In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished." Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You now, as we enter into a time of praying together, um, I remind you that the work of Jesus' hands and feet is more than just a mental exercise. You know, it's, um, it sometimes requires hard work and hard physical work. Sometimes there's difficult emotional cost. And sometimes it requires sacrificial financial giving. You know, I encourage you to prayerfully discern how God is calling to you. And I, I invite you to share your gifts at the giving station in the back this morning or by making sure that they're received in the church office. Um, but as we pray for our faithful gifts and giving to God, um, and as we pray for one another, I ask if you have any concerns or joys that you would like to share. Mary? Yeah, Vine and Design, I had 13. Nice. It's amazing the things that are happening. You know, to Elaine. I know. So Elaine is not healthy um, and was unable to travel to Greensboro yesterday for the birth of her granddaughter. Um, but Frankie is doing well. Little baby Frankie is doing well. Um, on that note, baby Philip is not doing well. He's had two emergency trait changes this week. I um, believe he's seven months old now, but um, they're having to bag him on a regular basis, and that's not the goal. So continue to keep baby baby Philip and his parents and family in prayer. I um, also want to continue to remember Dennis, um, Dennis Marlowe and Mary, because they're still unable to be with us. Um, Kevin, our music director, is um, under the weather this morning, so he's going to be unable to be with us at the next service. Um, I know there's so many more. What else do you have? Thank you. Marlo, we're praying for you. Uh, 
I missed that. Yes. Thank you. Life is good. Even in uncertain times. Questionable balloons and things like that. Yes. Anybody else? Okay, I know there are many other things that are on, on your hearts as there are on mine. Um, but will you pray with me now? Holy God, you've revealed yourself to us in Jesus Christ, sharing your own spirit in communion with our spirit. And as we come to worship, we ask that you disclose yourself more fully and help us to hear your written word and, and that we pray in the spirit of Jesus. Fill us with the desire to know your truth and to follow your commandments, for you are the creator of all places and peoples. And, and we come together in the name of your son. God, in him, you became one with us so that we might become one with each other in the worship of you. So help us to live into your good news. Help us to see that, that Christ nailed to the cross attests to the cost of your love and forgiveness. So our faith is not built on human wisdom, but on power, your power. Let us believe in your good news and not just live into it, but Help us believe that, that in Jesus we are forgiven people and, and as you're forgiven people we have to shed light among our neighbors so that when they see the good that we do they may also give praise to you. Gracious God we thank you for the light that's shown in Jesus revealing to us your holiness and, and our righteousness. We kind of deplore this gap between the two and yet we rejoice that you Chase the darkness that kept it hidden from our eyes. And by your light, we're both, we're both encouraged and condemned. We are reassured to see your face turned in our direction, bidding us to come to you. But we kind of shudder at the sight of us turning our backs on you and resisting the light that, that could mirror your glory. So we thank you, God, for leaving your light in the world, even though we've not always heeded your summons to become light. Instead of illuminating your character, sometimes we blurt it. You've commanded us to love you with all our being. And we've kind of consigned our love to the pigeonhole of religion. You've commanded us to love our neighbors as ourselves and you've called us to be peacemakers. You've, you've summoned us to be barrier breakers. Sometimes we've actually supported the makers of barriers with our silence or our sympathy even. We've seen the light, but not always walked to it. But even in our weakness, Lord, we long from our hearts to keep your law and do your will. So we ask forgiveness for our rebellion, not, not just for the sake of the joy that we've denied ourselves, but also for the joy that we've denied to others. Keep ever before us the needs of the world into which you sent Jesus and, and for whose sake he gave himself and gave himself to the utmost. Let us feel the world's pain as our own and, and seek the world's good as our own. Let us work for its transformation in the name and the spirit of, of him who came into the world not to condemn it but to redeem it. Let us Lord, let us be your light in this world. Encourage us, equip us, strengthen our efforts toward change that, that illumines you. Hear us as we pray for one another, those who are sick or challenged or injured, the lost, the suffering. Answer us as we seek direction and, and influence change for your goodwill. Hear our praises as we lift up joys that you have created for us. What a beautiful world we have. We only want to be your beautiful people. So bring our hearts together and help us to smile at one another. For you are our hope and our help, our truth, our way, and our life. Amen. 
We continue reading from 1 Corinthians, as we have the past couple of weeks. And today we hear Paul, this is Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. And today we hear him proclaim Christ crucified and the true wisdom of God. Paul says, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it's not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish, but we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right, what's happening next Sunday? Anybody? Next Sunday evening, afternoon evening. There you go, Super Bowl. Anybody going to watch? I'm going to watch. I am. I am. You know, next Sunday, the top two football games in the t- football teams in the nation will come together to kind of square off and determine which team will walk away with the title of best. You know, they will know why they are there. They will know that this is not the time for garbage efforts. They will, they know that they need to bring their best in order to be recognized as best. And in the midst of, of the national anthem and the halftime showmanship and the hype of commercials, they know. You know, we are, we're still in the middle of, of um, we're with Jesus in the middle of his Sermon on the Mount in our scripture this morning. And, and he's just finished all those blessed are they's, um, what we call the Beatitudes. That's the passage that we looked at last week. And, and he says, he, right after that, he says, you are the salt of the earth. So just like the teams who will know why they're there next week, Jesus is saying to his team, let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the the God flavors of this earth. He says, you're here to season the world. You're here to bring out the best. He says, if you lose your saltiness, how are you going to get that back? How how are people going to taste godliness? If you lose your saltiness, if you lose your saltiness, then you've, you've lost your usefulness and you'll end up in the garbage. See, in, in, in Jesus' day, salt was, it was extremely important. It was, it was probably a kind of rock salt that was sometimes even used as currency. Lisa, you might find this interesting. The, the, the sol in salt is where the, the, the word salary comes from. So salary comes from salt. That's where that started. Um, So, but more often than it being used as as, as money, it was used to flavor or preserve food. And when it lost its saltiness, well, then it lost its worth. So once that happened, the salt was trash. It, It wasn't worth anything anymore. And it was thrown out, probably thrown out on the ground where people would trample on it. Uh, just just walk on it as they pass by. And it was useless. It was worthless. And it was trampled underfoot like garbage. You know, but now salt losing its flavor doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, at the game next Sunday, it might come down to that last second. That's what we've been seeing in some of these games lately. Um, but with salt, there is no moment 
when everything is gone. It kind of happens over time without even being recognized. Um, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are to flavor the world, introducing um, your Christian faith to the world and not allowing the world to drain you of your flavor over time so that you gradually become worthless and, and ready to be thrown out. You need, Jesus says you need to watch against that. Don't get trampled on. You are the salt of the earth. Not you should be, not you ought to be, but you are. You are. You're going to watch the game. You know anything about the players? Before I go any further, I'm going to talk about football today. Do you notice? <laughs> Hang in there. We'll get to March Madness in a couple of weeks, right? So... <laughs> So you are Patrick Mahomes, the youngest quarterback in NFL history to ever be named a Super Bowl MVP. You are Travis Kelce. You are uh, who? Jalen Hurts. You are Chris Jones. Nothing? Any recognition at all? Okay. I'll, 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 t I'll dial it back. Um, you are players on the team who make a difference. How about that? Yeah. The world may be a blitzing maniac, but, but you are the salt of the earth. You're a blitz wrecking machine. All right, I said I was going to dial it back. All right, so and then Jesus says, here's another way to put it. You are the light. You are here to be light, bringing out not just God flavors of the world, but God colors in the world. God's not a secret to be kept. He says, we're going to go, I can't dial back the football. It's just in my brain this morning. Um, you're, we're going to go public like this, public as a city on a hill, as public as Super Bowl commercials. You know, he says, if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to put you under a bucket and hide you. Yeah, you don't think that, do you? He said, I'm putting you on a light stand. I'm going to lift you up higher than a halftime show. You know, and, and now that I've put you there um, on, on a hilltop, on a light stand, I've put you center stage, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. He says, by opening up to others, then you'll prompt people to open up with God. How easily would it be for us to hide under that bushel? You know, if we, if we hide under there, then we're not going to get blown out. You remember that song? Yeah, don't let Satan you out. Yep. But we will be in the dark if we're, if we're under there. You know, Jesus is saying shine, shine out in the open. You can't flavor the meal if you stay in the shaker. You, you can't light the city if you hide in the dark. You can't win the Super Bowl if you stay in the locker room. You can't entertain the masses if you never take the stage. See, the way of Jesus is, is out in the field, out in the world. It's mission. It's evangelism. This is Jesus calling us to rethink church and to become the church. Church isn't a place that we go. It's, it's a thing that we do. We do church. We be church. Church is a verb. You know, now mission is a thing that we do really well here at St. Andrews. You were speaking to that this morning. Mary. Um, mission is how we reach out to others. It's how we, how we make a difference in the lives of, of folks who, who need that. It's the feeding and the visiting and the clothing and the reading books and the making scarves and the angel trees and the giving trees and the sewing classes and a million other things that we do. In that way, we do church well. But what about evangelism? Boy, that word scares people sometimes. That, that one's a little different. So often, churches don't give evangelism nearly the attention that we give mission. And in that way, maybe we don't always do church as well. The scripture says, let your light shine before others. Open up to others and use that to prompt people to open up to God. That's evangelism. See, evangelism is it, it's just telling. That's all evangelism is. Evangelism is telling your personal story about what Jesus Christ has done in your life. Just telling your story. You know, we've been talking about this for a few weeks now. And, and, and now we're, we're naming it now. We're naming it evangelism. Evangelism is the telling of your personal story, telling what Jesus has done in your life for the purpose of having someone else come to follow Jesus just like you follow Jesus. So I, I have to tell you, a lot of folks, and I'm not going to name any of you, of course, but we'll, we'll pretend it's, you know, only my last churches. But a lot of folks um, think that evangelism is my job only. You know, that's what you pay me for. I'm the paid evangelist for St. Andrew's Church. You know, but I got to tell you, I'm not, the, I'm not the evangelist. I'm not the evangelist of St. Andrew's. I'm the pastor of St. Andrew's. I'm the, the, the shepherd, the, um, the spiritual head of the family. 
if you will. I'm the one who is sent here to serve in order to equip you. You are the evangelists. Every single one of you has a personal story. You were raised in a certain way. You were introduced to Jesus Christ in a certain way. You believe and follow Jesus in a certain way. And not one of those ways is like anybody else's way. Every single one of you has a unique story, um, a, a unique personal story, a story that, that has its own salt and its own light, a story that, that um, has its own flavor and, and has its own um, uh, illumination that can't be hidden under a bucket. Evangelism is telling other people that story. You know, it's as simple as that. As simple, every single time you sit down to talk with someone, our stories get told. Would you say that's true? Go like this. Yep, 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 yep. Um, what, what, you know, we're really, really good at telling, um, talking about our families and talking about our hometowns. But, but what if our stories took just a little turn and, and just a little change from the usual telling? What if your story took a detour into the most wonderful moments of your life and how God has influenced those moments? Now, let me, let me show you how that works a little bit. You know, a lot of times people ask me where I'm from. Where are you from? Um, so when Joe asks me where I'm from, we don't have a Joe here, um, so this just this just put your name in there. Joe asks me where I'm from, and I typically say I'm originally from Winston Salem. You've probably heard me say that, and that's usually the end of it. I'm originally from Winston Salem, but wh here's here's what maybe I should say. Well, Joe, I'm originally from Winston Salem, where I grew up in New Hope United Methodist Church. And that's the first place that I remember hearing the stories of, of Jesus. When my Sunday school teacher, Miss Sue, Miss Sue is amazing, Miss Sue told me those stories. You know, I still remember those stories, and I, and I still read them all the time. And I was thinking the other day, I was thinking about um, some of my favorites. And one story that just really always gets me is about when Jesus was a small boy, and, and, he, and his parents lost him for three days. Joe, they lost the Son of God. And I got to tell you, that makes me feel a little bit better about myself as a parent. Um, but when they found him, he was over at the church. He was over at the big church, talking with all the pastors and telling stories and, and explaining things just like a grown-up would. And that story always reminds me that when I feel lost, I can always find Jesus. And I love how the stories of the Bibles always make sense to the things that are happening in my life. So, Joe, have you ever read the stories of the Bible? You know, you should come to church with me and, and hear some of them. That's what I ought to be saying to Joe. You know, and when you say something like that, and when Joe comes here, because he will come if you talk like that, um, that's when he can learn more about the stories of Jesus and about how he can love him just like you do. That's when he begins a journey that's going to change not only his history, but it's going to change his future because the entire world of, of life and death is now open to Joe. You know, all because you were willing to talk about when you grew up. That's evangelism. That's being church. Tell you what, try it at lunch today. Go home today and practice. Go home, go to lunch with somebody or give somebody a call and, and spend a few minutes telling each other just one time when, when God made a difference in your life. One, one moment, one, just, just one story. And the more you tell it, the easier it gets to tell. You know, and these are good stories. These are, I love hearing your stories. You know, they're fun to tell. They're even, they're even better to hear. You know, you know, talk to each other. Really talk. Develop your relationships. Where are you from? That's, that's a simple question. Where are you from? You know, and, and as we continue reading in the scripture today, we realize that we cannot live from this point on, you know, into the future, forgetting about everything that came before us. We have to tell these stories because we incorporate that into our learning and we become mature in our faith with that knowledge and that wisdom. We have to spend time with our past. Now, on the other hand, we cannot live completely in the past or we risk viewing God as stagnant, you know, denying that God is continually living and continually creating to this day and, and doing new things and fresh things among us. You know, Jesus didn't come in an effort to kind of forget all the football strategies of the past and simply concentrate on the Super Bowl. Jesus came to complete the season, you know, and he's going to use the best plays of the season's playbook to do that. 
He came to square off and to determine that our team is going to walk away with the title of best. You know, we're not to be thrown out and walked on by people. We are not to have our light blown out or hidden away under a bucket. We're to, we're to think. We're to think through our strategies and be prepared for the next time we come across a Joe who wants to talk to us. And, and we're to kind of weave our personal story into every conversation that we have. We are to tell the stories of our personal encounters with Almighty God and tell the stories of how God has been influential in our lives and tell the stories of Jesus in such a way that people have no doubt that we're totally in love with him. We're to be so in love with Jesus Christ that we live our lives differently, so differently that people notice and then they crave what we have. That's salt. That's light. That's the taste of godliness. That's making a difference. That is evangelism. You know, Paul demonstrated evangelism when he, when he visited the people in Corinth and he reminded them of it in his letter. He wrote, I didn't come preaching God's secrets to you like I was an expert, right? He said, you know, I deliberately kept it plain and, and simple. Um, first, Jesus and who he is, and then Jesus and, and what he did, crucified. Um, Jesus crucified. He says, to tell you the truth, I wasn't really sure how to go about talking to you. I was scared to death. Well, I again find myself in good company. I'm scared to death every time I stand up here on Sunday morning. So if Paul felt that way, I feel a little bit better about myself. Um, but he says, so Paul says, I just decided to talk and let God do the work of speaking to your heart. Now, I know that's true. And you've heard me say this before. So many times after a service, one of you comes to me and says, when you said this, it spoke to me. And I want to say back to you, that was not anything I said. I didn't say anything like that. That's God talking to your heart. That didn't come from me at all. I didn't even think that. You know, that surprises me as much as it surprises you. So we need to listen to that speaking to your heart. Paul didn't have all of the answers and he knew that. He wasn't a polished preacher with training in evangelism. According to Paul, he came with weakness and fear and, and a whole lot of shaking you know, all Paul did was tell his story, simple, with, with no talk of an agenda, just, just talking with people. God will do the work. You just talk about the best times in your life and you give God credit for those times. That's evangelism. Tell your personal stories. Um, in, the, in the midst of the national anthem and the halftime showmanship and the hype of commercials, know why you're here. You're here to share the taste of godliness. You're here to share your best. Will you pray with me? Holy God, you are the spirit of promise, the spirit of, of unity. And we thank you that you're also the spirit of renewal. Renew in the whole church that, that passionate desire for the coming of your kingdom, which will unite all Christians in one mission to the world. May we all grow closer to the Savior of our world, and may we all be dedicated to telling our stories and being our best. Amen. Well, I invite the servers and the praise team to join me. And as they come, we approach our service of Holy Communion. You know, and I remind you that everyone is welcome without barriers. You know, everyone. There are no restrictions because the invitation is not mine to give. The invitation to feast at the Lord's table comes from Christ our Lord who invites to his table all who love him. All who really, really are sorry about their sins and, and everyone who's working to live in peace with one another. So as God's forgiven and reconciled people, as you are, I invite you to lift your hearts together as we pray. Will one of you take the cup and one take the bread and have some of you in the cup? Thank you. There she is. Let's pray. Merciful God, we confess that we've not loved you with our whole heart, but, but you've assured us of our worth and and your forgiveness of our shortcomings. So we're convinced that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, proving your love toward us. And for this, we give you thanks and we call you holy. By the baptism of Jesus, suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to us, your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. 
And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died and Christ has risen and Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us boldly pray in the way that we've been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you, the table is set and you are invited to come. When it's all in sin and done, There is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all in Did I 
Thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others, to tell them our stories. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. light of the world. Go to flavor your living with goodness and love. Go and let the light of Christ shine on everyone you meet. And as you go, may God bless you richly as missionaries and evangelists. Amen. Amen. Thank you.